Hey everyone, welcome to WitCode, where in this video we're going to combine ESLint and VS Code for some helpful code style and quality highlighting. We're going to learn what ESLint is and also how to configure ESLint and VS Code. So to begin, what is ESLint? Well, ESLint is a tool that analyzes JavaScript code for problems, whether it be code quality or style issues, by following a set of configurable and customizable rules. ESLint is most commonly used to ensure consistent code quality and style throughout the project. For example, the following code we have here has a few inconsistencies when it comes to style. Here, the first variable uses double quotes, the second variable uses single quotes for a string declaration, and also the function say hello is called without a semicolon on the end, while the function say goodbye has a semicolon. So, we could use ESLint and VS Code to point these inconsistencies out to us by underlining or highlighting them. So to begin this setup, what I have is a directory called ESLint VS Code with one file in it called practice.js. And to begin, let's initialize this project as an npm project by running npm init-y. The command npm init transforms our directory into an npm package by creating a package.json file, which we can see right here. This package.json file will hold important information about our project, such as the fact that it uses ESLint. This dash y argument that we added on um, or provided to npm init provides default values to package.json. And now to use ESLint, we of course have to install it. So let's install ESLint, which is simply an npm package. We can install it as a development dependency by tagging on save dev. We want to install ESLint as a development dependency because it is used while developing a project. It is not needed for the program to run out in production. And now we can set up an ESLint configuration file by running the command npm init at ESLint config. This ESLint configuration file will be used to configure ESLint. The content of this configuration file, and hence behavior of ESLint, will be determined by the answers to a series of prompts that appear after running this command. The first one here asks what we would like to use ESLint for. We want to use it to check syntax, find problems, and enforce code style, the third option. Next, ESLint asks us what type of modules our project uses. For this project, we will be using CommonJS required at exports, the second option. We are then asked for a framework that our project uses. We aren't using any frameworks for this demonstration, so select none of these or the third option. This demonstration will also not use TypeScript, so select no here. And for this demonstration, our code will be run with Node, not the browser. Here, we have to deselect the browser and select Node. To do this, press space when the cursor is over browser, this deselects it, and then press space over node to select it. Then just hit enter. And so we can also define our own custom style for ESLint, but for this demonstration, we'll be using a popular style guide. So select use a popular style guide. The popular style guide for this video will just be a standard style guide. And we want the format of this style guide to be in JavaScript format. And now we'll be prompted to install some development dependencies that are required to make our selections work. So select yes to install them and then select npm as the package manager. After following these steps, we should have a .eslintrc.js file created for us, which we can see right here. The file eslintrc.js exports an object that is used to configure ESLint. Each key and property in this file tells ESLint what the syntax and style of our code should be. And now that we have ESLint installed and configured, we can create a script to run it against certain files or directories. So inside package.json, add ESLint and then dot dash under scripts. This command runs our current folder, specified by this dot dash, through eslint to check for errors based on our eslintrc.js configuration file. To run this command, just provide npm run lint into the terminal.
Now, if we scroll up, we can see 13 problems with 13 errors, zero warnings, and some other information about our code style and quality. So this lets us know of all the code styling and quality issues present in our project. But so we can run ESLint against our project manually to point out some code style and quality issues, but it would be easier to know about these issues without having to run this command. To do this, let's integrate ESLint into VS Code so we can get some useful highlighting features. First, we need to install the ESLint extension. So click the extensions tab in VS Code, type in ESLint, and install the one published by Microsoft. So click on extensions here, type in ESLint, and run install. Now, if we go back to our index.js file, we can see all sorts of underlining that doesn't follow our ESLint configuration. So this useful highlighting is done through the ESLint plugin. Also notice how the styling and quality issues found by ESLint are listed under problems in the bottom left corner. And so we could manually go in here, underline each of these, do a quick fix, and um, click on them just like this. However, we can further edit how VS Code interacts with ESLint by changing VS Code settings. VS Code could be configured at two scopes, user settings and workspace settings. User settings apply globally to any instance of VS Code that is opened, while workspace settings apply only to the open project. In this tutorial, we'll work with workspace settings. So to do this, open the command palette of VS Code by going to View and then Command Palette. Then type in Preferences, Open Workspace Settings, JSON. This file is essentially a JSON version of the Workspace Settings GUI in VS Code. We can use this to configure how the ESLint plugin works with VS Code. For example, instead of manually fixing everything that ESLint finds wrong, we can make VS Code fix these errors for us automatically upon save. And we can do this by adding the following to our settings.json file. Now, what this does is fix all our ESLint on an auto on whenever we save the file. So let's go back to practice.js. And now the underlining will disappear when we save this file except for issues that don't have a quick fix. So this, for example, doesn't have a quick fix to it, unless we just add some sort of disable um, to get rid of this error. But instead, we could just fix that error ourselves. But so there we have it. The plugin system of VS Code is one of my favorite things about it, and adding ESLint to projects can make us feel a lot better about the consistency of our code style. But anyway, I wanna thank you for liking and subscribing today. Um, I hope this video is useful, um, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.